So in order to take a look at these two little areas where we see these blips in the timeline view, what we're going to do is we're going to expand the, pro the uh, PROC NTO process. We're going to select thread 9 and we can see the area where uh, thread 9 has got some activity associated with it. So we can make a selection in the timeline and you can see the duration of that. But to add a little more context to the colors that I'm using, let's first open up an additional view that shows us the, uh, the legend for the colors that we're looking at so that we get a feel for if I'm seeing green or if I'm seeing orange, what that means and, uh, and you know, what the context is for this display. So you can do that through window show view and there's a timeline, uh, state colors display that can be opened up and we can put that into our, our display here so you can follow along with the colors I'm using or just have it as a handy display for your own uh, purposes. So we can see here that inside of this blip there seems to be two different areas um, of activity, one that's dev B and one that's thread 9. Uh, so we'd like to take a look and figure out what's going on with those. So we've zoomed in, right, made the selection, selected the zoom, we zoomed in, the timeline's grown, and we're getting a lot more detail now. And in fact, you can see the detail in the trace log view. The trace log view is an accompanying view where if you select the timeline, you can actually scroll up and down the content inside of it. So there are a couple of facilities that will help us understand why it is that some uh, a particular thread is running or why it's not running. In the case of PROC NTO, and we know that PROC NTO is a server and it shouldn't really be doing anything on its own accord. So we have two facilities that allow you to track back to say, well, this is a thread that's running, why is it running? Or in the case of uh, general CPU usage, I'm a server process, but I'm probably not running of my own accord. What is making me run? So we can use the why running view to select a point in time, and whatever's running at that point in time, if you do a query to figure out what the why running state is, it'll go back and tell you, oh, PROC NTO in this case is running because we had a pterm call. Well, it doesn't seem likely that pterm is the cause for our PROC NTO thread to be, to be consuming a lot of CPU, but just to make sure that we can validate that, let's go and run this secondary query, which is the client-server CPU statistics. So we're going to run it over the entire log file because that's the context we'd like it in. We're going to run the query, expand the list, and you can see here, it shows you a list of CPU usage in terms of time, but it's broken into two different categories, self-time and imposed time. Self-time is the time that you're running because you would like to run, and imposed time is the time that you're imposing onto other servers in the system. So if we go through and expand out the list, we can break it down and look at specifically who is imposing time on PROC NTO thread 9. When we look at that, we can see that actually the culprit in this case is the QCON process and QCON thread 6. So now, using this information, we can actually start burrowing down to the root cause of, well, there's a client involved here, what is that client doing? So now, we've determined that there's a client of interest that we're we'd like to look at, that's QCON thread 6. Um, so we're going to use another statistical view, the general statistics, to figure out what activities is it that QCON is doing that is causing uh, PROC, 9, PROC thread 9 to run. So in order to do that, open up the view for general statistics, rerun the statistics, and we're going to uncheck the selection at the bottom that says show display for uh, show statistics for the entire display. We actually are only interested in the selected element, and that's QCON thread 6. So when we select that, we see that our display narrows down to a much smaller list, and we can see that it's reply blocked for a significant amount of the time, and only really running for a little bit. So this is a case of a client that runs for a short period of time, makes a request, imposes work on other people, but would never show up on anybody's radar. So now what we can do is we'll do a query. We'll actually select QCON thread 6, perform a search to figure out what messages is it sending and who is it sending those messages to. Perhaps there's more than just uh, PROC thread 9 that's involved. So when we run that search, what will happen is that the timeline display that we've split with the CPU usage display here, the timeline display will actually be annotated with a number of little red circles uh, indicating each one of the search hits that's uh, being found. And we knocked off the search coming from the general statistics by saying we wanted to search for elements that were found in its list of events. And when we scroll through, we'll do two different searches. We'll search for the send message as well as the send communication event. The combination of those two events will tell us who is being sent to 
and uh, what actual payload information is being sent. So we can actually determine from the message send whether it's a write request, a read request, a device controller request, or something else. And so in this case, we can see from the search results that the sends are all write requests and they're all going to PROC NTO thread 9. So this is interesting. Understanding a little bit about what the QCON thread, uh, the QCON process is, it's the logging process for the IDE. Uh, so it is the target agent where all the information is brokered back and forth. So if we wanted to make sure we're just closing the loop on this, there's a suspicion that this is actually the thread that is capturing the data from the instrumented kernel and then writing it out. And we're writing it out into shared memory. But we just want to make sure, so let's take a look and find out why is it that uh, QCON thread 6 is running in these instances. So when we do the query, we're going to use the same capability we were using before. We're going to use the Y running search. We're going to apply it to QCON thread 6. We're going to take a look and say, well, why are you running? Comes back a couple iterations and says, I'm running because I was talking to Proc, and Proc replied to me, well, it's not the one we're interested in. Let's dig a little bit deeper by doing the previous search. We'll dig a little bit deeper, and we find out that, ah, it's receiving a pulse. And where's that pulse coming from? It's actually coming from Proc NTO. So in fact, this really is the true root cause that we had uh, believed um, for the overall CPU usage of Proc NTO Thread 9. It's being requested by QCON Thread 6 to perform a write request, and that write request is being triggered by the kernel when an instrumentation kernel buffer is full. So in fact, what we're doing here is we're using the instrumentation's capability to query the instrumentation itself. And using this technique uh, on your own system with your own configuration, you can actually figure out a rough uh, overhead or cost of logging in your system, which is uh, often a question that comes up when people are using the instrumented kernel. So hopefully this little bit of an introduction uh, to system profiler uh, analysis was useful for you. And I'd encourage you, there are two documents that are excellent reading if you're interested in furthering uh, yourself in this area. The System Analysis Toolkit User's Guide is a mainstream documentation describing the instrument kernel, as well as the IDE uh, User's Guide in the section Analyzing Your System. Thank you very much.